Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing something super fun. I'm kind of experimenting with metallic watercolors and I'm also going to be doing it with that really big solid rectangular stamp that I used for day one in my capsule challenge. So this is going to be um, really artistic looking. I love how it turned out, but it was also so simple. I think you guys are going to love this and it can be adapted for use with so many other stamps. I think you're really going to love it. Let's get into it. I really wanted to use the metallic watercolor paints from Altenew on this black watercolor paper today. And I also wanted to use the You Matter stamp set and see if I could stamp with the metallic watercolor. So this is a little bit of an experiment for me. I'm sure someone else has tried this some sometime in the past, but I have never seen it. I've never tried it myself. So I thought I'd try it today. I cut down my black watercolor paper to five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I put it in my Misty stamp positioning tool and mounted that large solid block shape from the U Matter stamp set so that it's sort of in the center of my watercolor paper. I'm bringing over some of this purple metallic paint and applying it to the corner of the stamp. Notice the fluidity of the paint at this point. Um, you'll you'll want to take note of that because it does change over time and I'm going to bring that up because I learned what sort of uh, consistency I needed with the paint. So notice that when I press that down, it really spread that watercolor out. And then as I pull up the door, it sort of pulls that paint down to the bottom again. I think it's a really cool look. So if you want a particular, like a look like this, have your paint be a little bit more on the fluid side. It's still thick, but it's a little more fluid. Now take note of this blue. It's a little bit thicker. It's not quite as liquidy. And um, I purposely did it this way. I waited until more of that water was absorbed um, so that it was a little bit thicker just to see if I would have the same effect. And sure enough, it has a different effect. Um, the paint doesn't, it, like the, doesn't spread quite as much. It kind of stays more where I put it, which is exactly what I wanted. And also when I pull up the door of my Misty, I don't get the color pooling in one particular area. So it really just depends on the look you're going for. So this red is about the same consistency as the blue, but maybe just a little bit thicker. Not a ton, maybe just a little bit. This one spreads a little bit more just because I'm pressing down. Um, but I love how these paints layer because it can go right over the top of the blue and the purple and it sort of uh, sits on top of them. It doesn't get absorbed, especially if you let this sort of dry in between the colors, which I did. So now I've got this gold and I put a little bit in that bottom corner as well, just so that I could have the gold kind of be the predominant color. And I'm going to press this down. And this is a really easy way to get a painted look very abstract, but having a little bit more control over it. So at this point, I wanted to add just a little bit more gold. I really liked those little splashes of gold in that bottom corner. So I just used my paintbrush and brought them in a little bit, just in that one little spot. And then I decided to splatter some of the colors over top as well to get that more organic look. So I did it with the gold, the purple, and also the blue. And I wanted just a little bit of these colors kind of going into the gold area because that gold area was so large and it was kind of overtaking everything. But I also thought about there being a hierarchy of the colors. So from the most color to the least color, it was gold, red, blue, and purple. I'm now using the CZ Design stamp uh, that just says hello. I thought about having a second greeting underneath, but thought, oh, there's kind of a lot going on with this. I'll leave it at just the one. I'm stamping it in clear embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm actually going to stamp this twice because this watercolor paper has a really beautiful texture, but it also doesn't take like stamped images very well. You really need to like stamp it a couple of times to make sure it gets into that texture. So I did stamp it in the same place twice, and I'm glad I did because I got a really good impression, uh, which I didn't really realize until I put the embossing powder on. So now I've got some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe, I'm sprinkling that on, 
And I didn't let this dry any particular length of time. And because of that, just the bottom edge caught a little bit more of that embossing powder. Not a huge deal. I used a dry paintbrush just to wipe away any of that embossing powder. And even if it did get on there a little bit and I've got little speckles everywhere, this is a very organic looking card. It's not a huge deal. So I hit that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted. And then I trimmed it down so that it was three and three quarters wide by five tall so that I can put it on an A2 card and have the white edge showing. I put the foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor panel and then adhered it to a white note card made out of some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 110 pound cardstock. And that is the card. Look at the shine and shimmer on that. I think it turned out so beautifully. I absolutely love how that turned out. I want to try it out with all my other pearlescent and metallic watercolors or even just regular watercolors, gouache. I want to try stamping with a bunch of other mediums. I think it could be so fun and it really opens up a whole new world of what you can do with those supplies. And I really think that's what my capsule paper crafter challenge is all about. It's about challenging me to use supplies in different ways and really stretching them. So if any of you guys are doing the challenge along with me, let me know over at Instagram, reply to this post with this card on it and let me know how it's going, like how you're enjoying the, the challenge. I know a lot of you have done it when you're moving or uh, you're redoing your craft room or like you're traveling, you've really loved putting together a capsule for you to use uh, when you don't have access to everything that you have in your stash. I think it's really fun. All right, now it's time for another why, and here we go. Okay, this one is from Mindy Blazer. She says, hi, Christina. I love your video idea and wanted to share how paper crafting has been a literal lifesaver for me. In 2006, I was suffering from severe depression. My son had graduated from high school the year before and had left the home. My tween daughter was moving to Texas to live with her father and my then boyfriend and I had just gone through a painful breakup. My heart was hurting so badly. I was a lonely empty nester and spiraling downward emotionally. I had no sense of purpose or hope. I couldn't get out of bed most days. I was avoiding people I loved and I was battling suicidal thoughts. Despite therapy and antidepressants, I could not shake the serious feeling of dread I carried in my heart. I could see no future for myself. But one day, my son's girlfriend, now my daughter-in-law, had recently been to a card making party with her mother and she invited me to come over and play with her new supplies. We made cards for hours and for the first time in months, I didn't feel dread. I could focus on something positive and beautiful, something I created with my hands. A few days later, I went to a local scrapbook store and bought several supplies for myself. My daughter-in-law and I got together to, again to make Christmas cards. With every card I made, I could feel myself coming out of the darkness. Each project gave me a sense of purpose, and I was thrilled to give the cards to friends and family. Therapy continued, but I really, con but I really credit card making with helping to flip the switch on my depression. Now, 14 years later, I still enjoy paper crafting. I also do mixed media and art journaling and dabble in watercolor and illustration. Creating gives me great joy and I still find it therapeutic in dark times. I've been a follower of yours since I believe 2009. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago, 2009, 11 years ago, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. And I appreciate all the years of inspiration, thank you. That is so amazing, Mindy. Got me a little choked up again. Tried real hard not to cry. Um, but I think that is the story for a lot of card makers and even crafters in general. I think, um, sometimes making something with your hands could really pull yourself out of yourself out of a spiral like that. And I think that's amazing. And I'm so glad that you found that at just the right moment. It's really amazing. So remember your why, why you do what you do and make sure you do it with love. I will be back very soon with another card. In fact, actually, I'm going to be going live every Friday for a while. I really loved going live last week, so I'm going to be going live every Friday. Um, I'll try to post what time exactly. Um, last week I did it at, I think it was 12 noon Mountain Time, and it worked out really well. So I might do that same time again. So just watch for that. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys on Friday for a live stream. It's going to be fun.